I did actually debate whether or not I would record a podcast this week. Today just feels so much like a snow day. I feel like it's a day off. Does anyone else feel like just taking a day off when it snows really heavily like this? Okay, work face on, work head on, let's film a podcast. Hi there, welcome to the Kelpie Knits podcast. This is episode four. My name is Ailey. I live in Inverness in the Scottish Highlands with my husband Kieran and our puppy Odin. I'm the yarn dyer behind Kelpie Knits. I run my own business, I work from home, and you can find me over at kelpieknits.com if you're interested in seeing any of my yarn. Although I will have a few bits and pieces of news to do with the shop at the end of the episode. You can also find me on Instagram at Kelpie Knits and at Kelpie Knits Podcast. I also have a Facebook group which is just called Kelpie Knits but it's been quite neglected over there, I haven't had a lot of time, so if you need me more urgently, find me on Instagram or try emailing me at kelpienits at gmail.com. This podcast is the home of the Kelpie Cal 2020, which is all about busting your stash. So if you have yarn that you've put off using or a little hoard that is getting a bit too big, this is the cal for you. I've explained a lot in the past, in the past few episodes, but the only rules are you have to use yarn that's already in your stash to make a finished project. You can't buy any yarn for these projects. Once you've finished your project, you need to post it to our Ravelry group, which is just called Kelpie Knits Podcast. And, and that's it. It's really, really simple, really easy. There's been loads of good submissions so far this month. So get involved, it's lots of fun. The grand winner of the Kelpie Cal will be announced at the end of 2020, the end of this year, but there is also a winner every month who will receive a free subscription to the Kelpie Knits Yarn Club. The Great Scottish Playlist Yarn Club is inspired by all my favourite songs from Scottish artists and bands. The colourways have been really good fun to put together so you don't want to miss out. Make sure you're involved in the Kelpie Cal so that you're in with a chance of winning yourself a lovely sock set. I do have some additional prizes for the Kelpie Cal for the February winner and the grand winner of the Cal at the end of the year. Shutter Monkey Designs has donated these gorgeous project bags which I have put my projects in just to show you Give, or to give you a better idea of the actual size of them. Sometimes it's easier to have something in there. This is the first one. This is her love bag here. And this is her love heart. This is her love heart bag. They're a really good size. They're really sturdy and really well made. So if you're looking for some nice project bags in the meantime, I would go and check her out on Etsy, Shutter Monkey Designs. And you can get yourself one of these. They're absolutely gorgeous, they're really lovely, I'm struggling to decide which one to give away and which to keep for myself because she was nice enough to send two and said that I could keep one but one has to go to you you lovely people so I need to make a decision about which one is going to be given away. To help me with this I would like you to have some input here so can you comment either love for this project bag here or heart for this project bag here, let me know which one you would rather win in as part of the Kelpie Cal. Which one would you rather win? Would you rather win this love bag or this heart bag? You decide, I can't make a decision. They're too, they're too lovely, I love them both. If you have any questions about the cow, you can leave them in the comments below or you can get in touch with me on Ravelry or by email. Whatever works for you, I'm happy to help and answer any questions you might have. It has been a crazy fortnight <laughs> over here. I wasn't even sure if I was going to film a podcast this week, I'll be honest. Knitting has been very thin on the ground. Not much has happened knitting-wise, but I think it's important to bear in mind sometimes that life happens. Knitting isn't, isn't everything, especially if you work from home or you just have any family to speak of then you know life happens and knitting can't take priority all the time which I think I said in episode one so I'm going to try not feel too guilty about not having a lot of knitting to show you I'm just not going to feel guilty about it we've had some snow here in Inverness over the past few days it's been quite mucky it's been really quite miserable to be outside lots of rain really cold um but Odin has really enjoyed the snow. He gets so excited if it snows outside and he races out the door and runs around in these circles around the house. It's it's really, really funny and really cute. So that's been nice to see. 
he was a summer baby so he saw a little bit of snow in November but this has been his first proper amount of snow on the ground so that's been really really cute. Oh, this is how busy it's been, I, I need a coffee. I hate hearing people drink on camera but I need a coffee. <laughs> it was my little sister's 19th birthday on the 25th so a couple days ago by the time you, you see this she turned 19. Happy birthday India. You don't watch this because knitting is a torture to you but happy birthday. It was also my father-in-law's 60th birthday so we went out for dinner for him that was lovely chance for the family to be all together. I did have some really really bad migraines in the middle of this week. I get them periodically but not all the time um, but when I do get them they're really really bad so I had that on Tuesday or Wednesday I can't remember really really painful just had to lie down in the dark for a while because the light it's one of the reasons I hadn't filmed this earlier like I normally do because even the light from outside was just too much and it was it was really painful so the lights that I use in here for filming the podcast would have just been too much so that was that was a bit miserable but I feel a lot better now which is good and like I said it has been a fortnight over here the shop has been absolutely mental with orders which has been so lovely because I was so worried about the price change. I was worried that people were going to be upset or going to be annoyed that the prices had gone up, but I've had so much support and I've been completely overwhelmed with orders. So I'm so, so grateful to everyone who's bought a skein from me over the past wee while. I am working to get the last few orders out. They are coming. It's just been absolutely mental. I haven't been able to keep up on my own. <laughs> So thank you for being patient. They are on their way. Everything is dyed up now, so it should be posted today or tomorrow. Um, so thank you for your patience. And thank you to everyone who's bought from me over the past couple of weeks. It really, really means a lot. I do have a little bit of shop news at the end of the episode. So if you're interested in my yarns, definitely stick around because I have two new colorways to show you that I've been sitting on for the past, past two weeks. If you were eagle-eyed you will have seen them in the background of last week's podcast episode. If you're the type that likes an easter egg then maybe have another look at that video and see if you can spot them. But let's get into finished objects for now. Now I don't have any finished objects this week. I have finished some things. I have been knitting some gift knits that are baby sized but they're for people who watch the podcast and I don't want to spoil the surprise, so I can't show them to you. I'm really sorry. Yeah, I, I don't want to say anything about them. I have been knitting, so I have finished some stuff, but nothing that I can show you this week. This feels like a mini sold. It doesn't feel like a proper podcast episode. It feels like I'm filming because I've gotten the day off school and, you know, no real work is happening. We're all just sitting inside enjoying the the peace and the time to relax it doesn't feel like a it feels like a holiday episode or a mini so it's really weird <laughs> so works in progress i've talked a lot about my works in progress over the past couple of episodes so i don't really want to repeat myself too much if you're looking for more in-depth detail on anything that i mention watch the previous episodes or look in the show notes on ravelry that has all the information that you could need i have the project pages the patterns are there everything you could want i'm just conscious of repeating the same thing over and over again and and you getting bored i don't want that i have the kraken jumper still on my needles it has been on the naughty step for the past two weeks I haven't looked at it, I haven't thought about it, I haven't touched it. I just, we've decided that we need a bit of a break from each other, I think. We've decided that the best thing for our relationship is to spend some time apart. So we are. My mum's cardi still is not finished. I need to, <laughs> I still need to pick up all the stitches around the inner edge of the cardi, add on the ribbing, which will probably only take me an evening or two. Have I done it? No. Still not finished, still ongoing. I have more hope about getting that one finished soon though, rather than the Kraken jumper. I don't even talk to me about the Kraken jumper at the moment. <laughs> no, I haven't cast on my second sock in my Mermaid Days Kelpie Nights pair. The yarn is behind me. It sits behind me every time I sit in the living room, but I still haven't cast it on. Although the chances that I will cast it on in the next week or so are a lot more likely now than they were. And I'll explain why in a minute. 
I just I haven't felt any urgency to cast it on. I just I just haven't wanted to work on it really. So I haven't. <laughs> My Kyler shawl is coming along really, really nicely. It's looking absolutely gorgeous. But to be honest, because I'm increasing every row, although I've worked on it a fair bit in the past two weeks, it's not gonna look very different to you. It's getting wider, but it's not really getting bigger. So if I hold it up, it's gonna look no different to what you've seen in episodes past. So just a little update on that one. It is going, I have been working on it pretty much every day a little bit every day and it's looking really nice. I will probably show you in the next episode. You'll be able to see more of a difference then. I just, I don't want to bore you with the same things over and over again. But that one I have picked up and that one is going very well. My scrappy socks. Oh, I debated whether or not to even tell you. I'm so embarrassed and I feel so, I was so gutted at the time. But I said at the very beginning of this, I was going to be transparent about my mistakes. So I have to be transparent about my mistakes, otherwise I'm a hypocrite. I have frogged my scrappy sock. I know, I know, I'm so gutted. It just, it didn't work. I don't know whether I counted wrong or I measured wrong, but I ended up with, I think about double the stitches I was supposed to have. It was, it was going to be way too big. It would have been like baggy around my ankle, properly baggy, and it just wasn't working. And I couldn't figure out how to go back and sort it because I didn't know exactly what was wrong. I was absolutely gutted. I wrestled with it for a whole evening because I was determined to make it work. And I just, I couldn't get it. I couldn't get it. I was so sad. So I frogged it. I saved the yarn. I'm determined to make nice things out of my needle and thread yarn because it's too nice not to use. Some of that yarn has gone into one of the baby knits that I talked about that I can't show you. And it looks really lovely. It's a, well, I don't want to say, but <laughs> it's gone into one of the, the baby projects, which I love. And I'm quite happy that it's gone into something that someone is going to really enjoy. But I don't have my scrappy socks anymore. And I'm a bit heartbroken. But it does mean that now I will probably pay more attention to my Kelpie Knight sock because I don't have my scrappy sock on the needles anymore. It seems more reasonable to cast on another one. I won't feel as bad. But yeah, I feel I feel a little bit heartbroken. I feel I need to have a moment of silence for my scrappy sock dreams that I was so excited for and they just haven't quite turned out the way I want. Anyway, moving on. I do have one new, oh, no that's a lie, I have two new works in progress to show you. So you are going to get something for your, the time that you've spent here today, I promise. My first new work in progress that I need to show you is my North of the River blanket. So I'll have the pattern on the screen somewhere here because you hadn't seen it before. This has been the pattern that has saved my two weeks knitting wise, it really has. This is knit out of super chunky yarn on 10 millimeter needles. It's very simple, very easy to understand and because you're using such chunky yarn and chunky needles the progress is unbelievable compared to what I have been working on so this has been a real godsend this past fortnight. Where am I? So this is what I have so far. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see it but I'll do my best. This is it here. So it's This is made out of Drops Andy's Super Chunky Wool in their colour green. It's this really lovely olivey kind of hunter green almost. Look at this. I'm on my second ball of that wool, so this is two balls worth that I have so far. I think it's going to be more of a, a runner blanket along the bottom of a bed. I haven't made it too wide. This is it. So I think it's going to be nice along the bottom of a bed. I'm going to make it quite long, but this has been a joy to work on. I've absolutely loved it. Even if you only have time for a few rows, you can visibly see how much more you've knit and it's fantastic. The North of the River blanket was designed by 5410 Studio. I just got it on Ravelry, but it's it's been an absolute joy. If you need a quick gift knit for someone, if you just want a new 
accessory for your room or your, your living room this is fantastic i really recommend it yeah i love mine i think this is gonna Ooh, maybe i should make something out of that nice green what do you think nice jumper maybe mm -hmm. anyway i think this is going to be really really pretty i think it's going to be a lovely addition to the bed and i can't wait to work on it more absolutely can't wait my second work in progress that you haven't seen here in the podcast yet is actually living in this love bag. I think Odin's had a chomp on that one. Oh no, just his hair, we're okay. It's actually living in this love bag for the moment. I just stuffed it in here to show you what the bag looks like. I hadn't actually been keeping anything in these up until now. If anyone has project bags that they don't need, I'm in dire need of them. All of my knitting just sits out haphazardly which is a really bad idea when you have a dog. Don't do what I do <laughs> and consider donating your project bags that you don't like anymore. Back to the point, my second work in progress is living in this bag by Shutter Monkey Designs. And it is an everyday slouchy beanie by Dragon Horde Designs. And this is what I have so far. I'm making the smallest size since I just wanted this to be a sample knit for the shop. I don't intend on wearing this day to day. I think I have a slight mohair allergy because whenever I've been using the mohair for this hat, I get I can feel it now actually, I get really itchy, my nose gets very irritated, my skin gets irritated. So I'm determined to finish this hat, but then I don't really want to knit with mohair again. <laughs> Although I'm glad that I've knit this hat because I was planning on making a love note sweater using fingering weight and mohair. Had I done that, I wouldn't be able to wear it, I don't think. So this has been a good learning curve. But this is the hat so far. I have my brim here, and that's as much as I have of the body here. And I'm using my own yarns to make this. Like I said, I want it to be a sample for the shop. I'm using my grey wolf colourway on my mohair base, the fluff ball base here and I'm also this is gonna look really scrappy but I'm also using my printer broke for the hat here this is actually a uh, part of a cake I had left over from making a pair of socks out of my printer broke so I'm quite glad to get to use it to make something else so that I don't have half a cake sitting around anymore but it's looking lovely it's very soft it feels very luxurious I will say I did have a real a really hard time with the brim because it's folded that's not folded well I suppose it is folded that is double the thickness of the of the body of the hat so you provisionally cast on and then when you get to half the length of the brim you fold it over and knit them together so that you get this double thickness brim and it took me a lot longer than it should have it took me it took me a, a, most of an evening just to sort out the provisional cast on and finish the brim. I got quite frustrated with it and the bamboo needles I was using snapped. So I've managed to find some other ones I can knit the rest with but I got very frustrated with it. I just didn't like it. So I don't know if I'll make another one but I am happy with how this is turning out. I'll try turning it inside out so that you can see it properly. So this is the outside of the hat. I showed you the inside before. This is what it looks like. So you use a, f a couple sizes smaller needles for the brim, so the stitches are a lot smaller and, and they look quite neat. And then a larger size of needle for the body of the hat. So I've been working on this kind of in between everything else because it, it's just knitting every round. It's quite meditative, but like I said, I've been having a hard time with this mohair. It makes me very itchy and very sneezy, so I'm hoping I can get this finished quickly so that I don't have to use it anymore. <laughs> but that's not the pattern's fault. That's my aversion to mohair and my body and nose not really liking mohair. So there's nothing against the pattern. And like I said, I'm keeping it in this Shutter Monkey Designs bag. So it holds it quite well, really. That's got the two balls of yarn and my hat in it here. So it's a really good size. I really love the bag. Just not the sneezy hat. <laughs> that's inside it. <laughs> and that's it for works in progress. Like I said, it's been a slow fortnight with 
not very many changes so I hope you still like seeing what I have started working on in the past fortnight. Hopefully I will have more finished next time I see you so we can maybe have a parade of finished objects but it just didn't happen this this week, this couple of weeks. I had too much on and to be honest I'm just happy to have the time to sit down and actually film. It's quite a treat just getting some peace and quiet and some time to do that. I have a short Q&A segment. I opened up, I, I, I put a post up on my Instagram asking if you had any questions for me, um, knitting related or not, either is fine. And I had one question which asked which knitting patterns would I like to knit again? So I'm assuming knitting patterns that I have actually knit and ones that I want to give another go. And I have a few because I'm a creature of habit. So if I knit something that I really like and I like the way it turns out, then I'm desperate to make it again because it feels comfortable and I know that I can do it. <laughs> so I have a couple. Um, the first one that came to mind was The Weekender by Andrea Mowry. I made that last year and I gave it to one of my friends for Christmas and although it was really nice I really liked it I think it was a bad yarn choice if I could give it another go I would choose a yarn that had a bit more drape this one was a little bit dense and I feel like it could have turned out nicer although I think she liked it I think she enjoyed getting her knitted jumper for Christmas but if I were to give that another go I think I would be happier with a different yarn Another pattern that I would like to make again is the Reina. I made that shawl just a couple months ago, not that long ago, with minis that I got for Christmas. And it's such a perfect pattern for using up a single skein of fingering weight yarn that I found I want to make it with every single, or every one skein I have of colorways upstairs and fingering yarn. Which isn't practical because then you end up with several shawls rather than lots of different things that you can wear but the Raina shawl is really good. I really want to make another one of those. Another one that I'm dying to make again, and I hope I find the time for it at some point, is the Mermaid Top by Rebecca McKenzie. I think I talked about it in the last episode, maybe episode two, where I said I wanted to make this one again because it was just so fun to work on and the finished product is so beautiful. There's a gorgeous lace panel on the top. I think were I to make one for myself, I would give it long sleeves because I don't really like sleeveless tops. But I just, I'm dying to make one for myself to wear and I don't know when I'm going to get the time. <laughs> the last pattern that I narrowed down that I would make again would be the Log Cabin Blanket by Stacey Perry of Very Pink Knits. That was one of the first big projects I ever made and I was so happy when I finished it. It was such a big achievement. My first blanket, my first proper knit, I sewed it all together, I wove all the ends in. It looks great, it's still on my bed. And I'd love to make another one. That's actually, that would make a really good um, a baby gift knit, like I was talking about earlier on. That would be really nice. Mm. Can you get away with just starting a new blanket when you've just cast one on and you have seven works in progress on the go? Can you justify it? It would be great for scraps. Be great for the, the Kelpie Cal using up your stash because you can use any colour and you only need a little amount of every every colour, it's it's a really fun knit. One thing I will say is I am making a point of starting one of my Make Nine projects in these next two weeks. So next time I see you, I will have a Make Nine project cast on because if I don't get started on it, I'm not gonna have enough time to finish my nine by the end of the year because we're already at the very end of February and I'm dying to make them. They're all things I want to make myself and I've fallen into my same trap of making things for other people, for other reasons that aren't for me. So I'm going to make myself cast on something nice to give myself rather than give away. If I don't have a Make Nine project cast on for next time, then you can <laughs> shout at me in the comments, I don't know. Nothing's gonna happen, but I really, really want to cast one on. I want something for myself. So I'm gonna try and make myself for next time. I have a little bit of shop news. Now, if you're not interested in Kelpie Knits yarn, that's okay. It was nice having you and I will see you in two weeks. So mid-March time. If you are interested in my yarns, then I have some very exciting news because I have two new colourways to show you this week. Like I said, the eagle-eyed among you may have noticed them in the background of last week's video. 
uh, they're there at the moment. And the first new colorway that I have for you is called Ptarmigan. And this is it here. So there are some lovely red and green speckles here. It's quite a plain yarn, but I think it's really, really beautiful. I absolutely love the way that it's come out. I think it's almost quite Christmassy without being Christmassy. It's quite natural looking, I think. And I don't wanna say plain. I feel like plain is a, a negative word because I really love it, I think it's really beautiful. I basically wanted a, a more basic speckled yarn to knit with myself. I, I wanted it, so I made it. And it turned out nice enough that I'm gonna bring it to the shop so you can get some of this for yourself. So this is number one, this is ptarmigan. I should probably also say that a ptarmigan is a Scottish bird. That's what inspired the name. New colorway number two is a little bit different from ptarmigan. This is Springsteen. So here we are, I'll give you a good look at Mr. Springsteen. Now, as you can probably guess, this is inspired by my love of the boss himself, Bruce Springsteen, and his blue jeans. Because when this came out of the pan, it's the only thing that struck me. I knew I wanted to make a yarn inspired by Bruce Springsteen, but I didn't realise it was going to be this one until I kind of dyed it up by mistake and realised what I had made and just thought it's absolutely perfect. So if you're looking for a, a kind of a tonal, it's not quite a solid, there's a bit of variation in the colour. I'm always wary with calling any of my yarns a solid because they never are, they're never completely one colour, they, they vary in tone. But if you're looking for a lovely blue, then it doesn't really get much bluer than this. And if you love Springsteen, you've got to have it, you've got to have it. So yeah, these are the new offerings that are going to be coming to the shop when you see this video. Ptarmigan and Springsteen. I have those two new colourways, but I've also been adding a lot more bases to the shop and a lot more weights. So the colourways that I've had for quite a long time are now available on a couple of different weights. Um, some of them are available in DK weight, some of them are available in iron weight. And I have my printer broke, now available on my BFL base, Blue Face Lester. Now if you're excited by my printer broke because of the vibrancy of the colour, then the BFL version might not be for you because it's slightly more muted but it's absolutely gorgeous. I really, really love it. I think it's it's kind of like a grown-up version of my printer broke. It's not quite as loud, but still gorgeous, still colourful and lovely. So this is available in the shop now. I've also signed on to be part of Operation Social Justice that's been headed by Gamer Crafting. If you haven't looked at her podcast and you haven't looked at her yarns, you need to head over there right now. I'll have all the information here or here somewhere. But she's heading a, a campaign, a project, where yarn dyers like me or pattern designers or any, any kind of maker really are designing new colorways or new patterns with names inspired by radical kindness. There's been a lot of quite quite troubling behaviour and and actions within the knitting community online. Every time I see it, it makes me so angry and I don't like feeling angry. And that's one of the reasons that I signed on for Operation Social Justice, because it feels like you can do something. So I'm going to be creating a new colourway to be part of this project. It's in development, it is coming. I'm going to be opening pre-orders for this colourway and then it's either going to be sent out to you or the remainder are going to be available on the shop on the 15th of March. Now I will be issuing reminders closer to that time so this isn't the only time I'm going to talk about it but I want to let you know here nice and early that this is coming and will be announced in the next couple of days hopefully so you can have a glimpse of the colourway. I would encourage you to get involved if you're a maker. I feel like we can do more to 
actively and vocally show our support for people who have been marginalised in this community, in society in general. I think if you aren't being vocal in your support, it's not enough right now. You need to you need to show your support in a physical or vocal way. It's not enough to know in your head that what you believe in. When you're faced with people who are quite happy to to profit off other people's labor and pain, it, it isn't right. So 20% of the profits of everything that is sold as part of Operation Social Justice is going to charity. Uh, at the moment I've chosen LGBT Youth Scotland as my charity and there are a couple that I'm looking at that are more local to the Highlands. I'm making sure that I have as much information on them as possible before I commit to some of the proceeds of what I sell going to them but I will announce everything with more information about the colourway that is coming. So if you're a maker, please get involved. Get involved with Gamer Crafting, send her an email, get in touch. If you are a buyer, then when the time comes on the 15th of March, show your support by purchasing these items. The 20% the of the profits is going to charity is for the, a good cause. And just be kind and be loud. Be kind and be loud. That's the podcast for this week. I'm sorry it's a bit shorter than normal. Hopefully things will be a little bit more back to normal in a couple of weeks when I speak to you next. Hopefully I'll have more to show you and we can have a bit of a longer knitting chat. I hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. We, I can't really believe how many people have done that. It's over 300 now and that's double what I ever thought I would achieve. So please know that if you do subscribe, it means the world to me and I notice. I notice every single subscriber. I get an email every time someone subscribes to me and every time I get a little smile or I have to tell Kieran who's sitting beside me because it's really, really exciting. It is noticed and thank you very much. If you can click on the little thumbs up button on this video, the like button, that would actually make a world of difference. It lets YouTube know that you like this video and if YouTube knows that you like this video enough to click it, it will show this video to other people who might enjoy it. And then more people can see the video and more people can join us as part of the Kelpie community. Um, so that would mean a great deal to me if you could give that a little click. I know that this is what every YouTube video asks you to do, but it does make a difference. I never thought it, it did, but it really does. Remember, you can get in touch with me at kelpienits at gmail.com, especially if you're a maker and you'd like to donate a prize for the Kelpie Cal. They're sorely needed for the rest of the months and for the big prize at the end, so please get in touch with me if you're interested in that. You can also find me on Instagram at kelpienits and at kelpienits podcast. And I will see you again in two weeks. Have a lovely fortnight. Stay safe and warm in the weather if you're in Scotland like I am. The flooding has been quite bad and, you know, it's been a bit dodgy. So stay safe, stay warm. For now, I will speak to you soon.